The earth is like a on the This is a message from the future to the people of the world, warning that humanity faces extinction this century as a result of global warming and climate change. Can you save the human race is a master plan for the survival of humanity and an appeal for justice for the children. Act 1 is all about the panic on planet Earth and the inconvenient truth that our world is in danger which Al Gore has warned us about. Global warming is out of control, threatening humanity with extinction. Burning fossil fuels is causing a chain reaction of environmental disasters. The carbon dioxide in the atmosphere keeps rising all the time and the Earth's temperatures are increasing alarmingly. The glaciers and the polar ice caps are melting and the Antarctic ice shelves are breaking up and collapsing. Sea levels are rising threatening hundreds of millions of people with becoming environmental refugees. Hurricanes are increasing in ferocity and intensity, contributing to the worldwide flooding, which will kill billions of people by the middle of the century, according to United Nations scientists. In his film, An Inconvenient Truth, Al Gore said, our ability to live is what is at stake there is a state of emergency on the earth as the global crisis threatens an apocalyptic ecological cataclysm. The human race faces extinction, Professor Peter Barrett warned in November 2004. After 40 years, I'm part of a huge community of scientists who have become alarmed with our discovery that we know from our knowledge of the ancient past that if we continue our present growth path, we are facing extinction, not in millions of years or even millennia, but by the end of this century. Could this be the end of life on Earth? The Bilderberg climate criminals of banks, corporations and governments are committing crimes against humanity, but the environmental movement is fighting back in self-defense. Beware of the aliens. They are everywhere, destroying the planet, killing the innocent, and causing general disaster. It's supposed to be 70 degrees today. It's freezing here. Speaking of global warming, where is we need some global warming? It's freezing. The most criticized scene in the movie An Inconvenient Truth was showing that the combination of sea level rise and storm surge would flood the 9-11 memorial site. And people said, what a terrible exaggeration. Hurricane Sandy slammed into New York City last night, flooding the World Trade Center site. Storms get stronger and more destructive. Watch the water splash off the city. This is global warming. It's time to put America first. That includes a promise to cancel billions in climate change spending. Our plan will end the EPA. The next generation would be justified in looking back at us and asking, what were you thinking? Couldn't you hear what the scientists were saying? Couldn't you hear what Mother Nature was screaming at you? This movement is in the tradition of every great movement that has advanced humankind. We're not going to recognize it. We don't want to discuss it. It is right to save humanity. It is wrong to pollute this earth. It is right to give hope to the future generations. Don't let anybody tell you that we're going to get on rocket ships and live on Mars. This is our home. I have a feeling that when she unveils her puppies to the world, she's going to suddenly become world famous. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how it's going to happen, but I have a feeling Aww. that she's planning something. Yeah. <laughs> what are you planning, darling? 
The Eco Warriors in Britain are organising our Noah's Ark campaign, which is a massive worldwide publicity campaign to stop global warming and save the human race from being driven to extinction this century as a result of the burning of fossil fuels. We are friends of the Pacific Warriors who are fighting to save their island nations in the South Pacific from vanishing beneath the rising sea levels as global warming floods their world. The Eco Warriors modern day version of Noah's Ark will be the travelling school for Eco Warriors publishing and broadcasting the truth about the danger of global warming which threatens to wipe out all life on earth including the human race. The burning of fossil fuels is causing climate change and the earth's temperatures are increasing melting the polar ice caps and raising the sea levels threatening worldwide flooding which will kill billions of people according to United Nations scientists. The melting methane hydrate gas in the polar regions threatens an ecological cataclysm that will make the earth completely uninhabitable within 20 years and humanity is facing extinction. The eco warriors are attempting to change the future and ensure the survival of future generations by offering our solutions to the global environmental crisis. The only possible answer to stop global warming will be for the whole world to stop the burning of fossil fuels and to close down the fossil fuel industries which are causing global warming and climate change. To help stop the imminent genocide of humanity that is being caused by the capitalist Bilderberg group of banks, corporations and governments that are destroying the planet and wiping out all life on earth. The eco warriors are offering the people of the world our reality TV show for the children which is entitled Can You Save the Human Race?
church that they wanted to bring down and dig up the dead, well, they're not going to get away with it. They haven't got away with it. And the tide barn is just behind there. Okay, and that's um, 17th century or so. What's it? What's yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, that British Airways Peter. Man tank if you like. What's that there? Is that a scrapyard? Oh, that's a scrapyard. That's a friend of mine. Ah, does he have any spare space? See, this would be a decision that my friends would have to make themselves. Yeah. This is the route, you're saying, for the... Um, oh yeah, all these houses are going to go. And all this is the route of the march? Yeah, this was the route of the march. From the climate camp? Yeah, yeah. So are we, is the climate camp up here somewhere? It's further on, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, that pub's going to go, all this is going. All this is going, you know, yeah. All this down here is going. Yeah. 
So that's the entrance there. Look at that fence. That wouldn't take a lot for it to open up, would it? Uh, and this, this lady here, she's very, she's very strong against hair foot expansion, and you could introduce yourself and say, she might know who um, she got sign on that one. No, 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 not her on it. I'll get a picture of that. Yeah. Is it the other side? Well, that's easy peasy to get in, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Uh, we're bringing the vehicles in would have to be coming straight in through there, not a problem. All right, this is the big one on the left-hand side that yeah. I, I filmed just before. Yeah, yeah. The eco-warriors came back to grow Heath Row in Sipson Village to help with the defence and the court case for possession of the site and to stop Taylor's evicting everyone and also to open a new protest site in the area when the government finally announced their decision to go ahead with the third runway. The site for Grow Heath Row was originally found by the eco-warriors and we shared it with everyone else in the environmental movement along with all our ideas for using solar power and permaculture to transform Sipson into a sustainable futuristic eco-village to be named Extinction and to encourage the local people to act out the satirical film Passport to Pimlico and declare independence from the government. There's going to be like a playhouse and a strawberry house. And Esther is now a master of uh, off-grid concerts. <laughs> so Esther's... Uh, She's got all the tech to, to set up an off-grid uh, gig up to even 19 hours. <laughs> provide the electricity for the whole site. Amazing. Yeah, yeah they had an open mic yesterday and for like four or five hours it was powered by Esther. Just Esther's uh, attack. Because the rest is now Heathrow. Uh, the Eco Warriors were involved with the No Third Runway campaign at Heathrow Airport ever since the early days of the road protests in the 1990s. And we helped plan and organise the Camp for Climate Action at Sipson in August 2007. Our vision is to help inspire local people everywhere to open permanent climate camps and to hold people's climate conferences every weekend in their own local communities to transform every village, town and city on the earth into sustainable futuristic eco-villages to save humanity from being driven to extinction by global warming caused by the burning of fossil fuels. The alarming increase in global temperatures is melting the polar ice caps and threatening the entire South Pacific island nations of Tuvalu, Kiribati, Vanuatu, Tokelau, the Marshall Islands and the Maldives in the Indian Ocean with disappearing forever beneath the ever rising sea levels and the resulting worldwide flooding will also completely inundate many other low-lying countries and major coastal cities like London, Tokyo and New York. Trillions of tons of frozen methane hydrates in the Arctic region are melting and threatening to explode with the apocalyptic force of 10,000 nuclear arsenals at virtually any time, totally destroying the Earth's atmosphere and making the planet completely uninhabitable like Venus, which is searingly hot and sulfurous with an average temperature of around 460 degrees Celsius.
this is a practical workshop <laughs> with less theory and today we will build a solar panel from these cells. Everyone who never touched it, we touched it, yes, but careful, it's a very fragile monocrystal sheet, silicon sheet. Solar panels are made of this and collection layers and glass sheets. That is two glass sheets behind you. Every solar cell can produce half volt. If you have a smartphone, you can charge your smartphone with five volts. So to charge a smartphone with solar panel, you need at least 10 of this sheet connected in serial because if you want to boost this half volt what can be like this panel, we need to connect it serially. Okay, and what is the serial connection in this term? This called tubbing wire, it's a copper wire covered with tin and we will solder this wire to the top and to the bottom of these very fragile crystal sheets. I ain't happy, I'm feeling glad I got sunshine In a bag I'm useless, but not for long the future is coming on I ain't happy, I'm feeling glad I got sunshine In a bag I'm useless, but not for long the future is coming on It's coming on, it's coming on, it's coming on It's coming on, it's coming on, it's coming on, it's coming on The total value of all the world's fossil fuel reserves of coal, oil and gas is in the region of $100 trillion, which is why the capitalist banks, corporations and governments are determined to carry on with business as usual, even if it means that future generations will not be able to survive the resulting destruction of the earth and humanity is now facing extinction very soon. The corrupt Bilderberg group is mindlessly masterminding our own extinction and the only possible answer is for a grassroots movement of the people of the world themselves to find a way to repair the damage to the earth and to rebuild the entire planet before the capitalist system burns us all to death. To help the worldwide search to discover and implement genuine solutions to stop global warming, the eco-warriors are offering our own ideas to prevent the extinction of all life on Earth and save humanity from being driven to extinction this century. It is essential that we close down industrial civilization and the global capitalist system including all the polluting industries and corporations and introduce a new alternative political and economic system of localization environmentalism and environmental economics we must stop burning fossil fuels and switch to using renewable energies as soon as possible using solar power in every home, office, shop and business and convert all the internal combustion engines and cars, trucks and ships to run on hydrogen produced by the hydrolysis of water at the point of ignition. The world's governments must stop fighting wars and use the military forces of every nation to terraform the earth to repair the damaged ecosystems, 
remove the excess carbon dioxide from the air and the atmosphere using natural processes, plant billions of trees everywhere, create new rainforests in the deserts, and build new inland seas in all the wilderness areas to act as an escape valve to drain off the rising sea levels. All the churches on the planet should become sustainable eco-villages for the local people to use to recycle and reuse second-hand goods and all the empty buildings and abandoned land should also be transformed into eco-villages with local farms to grow food using permaculture and solar power. Yeah, well... He's in my bed. Stop eating 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 my bed. That little girl and, and her mum, I don't know if you know them, little Alana, little three-year-old. Oh, well, they've turned up now to... Uh, they spotted the puppies, you see, running around, so I'm filming it while you're chatting to me, and Doggy is... We're outside my tent, basically. The puppies are running around, and uh, the little girl is... Okay, he's back. meeting them. <coughs> oh, and now Doggy's barking, <coughs> which is... <coughs> All right, well, um, yeah, keep in touch and um, thank you very much. Um, come and visit the puppies. Yeah, come and see them. Um, oh, would well, you can come and visit me. You don't need to... Uh... No, okay. World War Three going on in there. I'm keeping out of it. Right, hope not escape. The Eco Warriors' massive Noah's Ark publicity campaign to help save the South Pacific island nations from vanishing beneath the rising sea level will raise awareness all over the planet about the danger of the extinction of all life on Earth caused by global warming and the climate camps and the people's climate conferences will provide the opportunity for everyone to learn about how to implement our genuine solutions to stop global warming. The eco-warriors plan to take the international climate camp and the school for eco-warriors on the water with a cruise liner named Noah's Ark and a full crew of hundreds of scientists, musicians, environmental activists, writers, artists, photographers, filmmakers, TV crews and mainstream and citizen journalists to the South Pacific Islands to raise worldwide awareness about the cataclysmic consequences of global warming and the imminent extinction of the human race. The Noah's Ark campaign is intended to be the greatest publicity campaign in history, designed to take over the entire world news media 
with the most important news story of the age, which will be all about how the ordinary working people of the world are fighting back in self-defense to try to stop global warming and climate change from wiping out all Nobody's life on coming. Earth and driving the human race to extinction this century and possibly as soon as 2030, if not sooner. The eco-warriors intend to take as many honest journalists as possible to the South Pacific to reveal the true, real-life human stories behind the tragedy of the island nations that are disappearing beneath the rising sea levels as a result of global warming caused by the burning of fossil fuels and threatening the islanders with losing their homes and becoming environmental refugees. The journalists will be able to publish and broadcast the truth to the whole world about how global warming is destroying the earth and killing humanity and to help publicize the eco-warriors genuine solutions to stop climate change while there still may be time to save the human race from being right, driven down. to Sit. extinction. <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll carry on yet. You, you didn't turn it off, did you? I did. You did? No, oh, just did. Should we do another one again? Oh my god, here we go. FBR. <laughs> Big Brother, watch. Big Brother's watching Big Brother, look, look. The little brother under him. Lots the streams. <laughs> right. I, I'd rather not nick actually with this because it's got to go on SoundCloud, mate. I don't be over YouTube and that. Big little doggies. Hello. So what do you think they're doing? Uh, well, they're trying to see something interesting. Apparently Black Lives Matter is blocking the tunnel. And God knows what else is happening. I think they know more than we do because they're a bit higher than us at the moment. I tried to go up to the roof but didn't see much more than I saw it from the ground. Yeah, they, did, they took a, a peek at us. Maybe they find something interesting in the camp naked hippies running around or something, but there's not, nothing, there's only a naked dog. Okay, well this is um, Music 10 signing on, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, they're coming. <laughs> Message. <laughs> Sipson, Harmonsworth and West Drayton. No, no, Sipson, Harmonsworth and Harlington. Oh, Harlington, right, okay. And then you've got Hayes and Uxbridge and West Drayton, so they're all kind of further of... over. So the title is uh, Diggers at Grow Heathrow. Let's, let's try to turn this into news. We just had a uh, BBC news helicopter hovering around for a while. Probably something to do with the Paralympics. Okay, let's go live. Occupy London. Here we go. Hi. 
either, guys. I have to say hello to a different channel this time. I think Occupy News Network has been seized by separatist rebels. That's all I know for now. So, welcome to Occupy London Van Muser channel. And this is the other entrance to the same uh, land that is uh, Grow Heathrow built on. I'm gonna zoom in now. You can see these diggers just appeared out of nowhere. A few minutes ago someone told me and this is very unusual activities in the backyard. There's more and more activities and security and stuff going on. Like not, not that quickly escalating at this point, but well, it is building, and they've got this part of the land an access to it, so it's not really good for the site on the other side of the land. Uh, they're gonna be picked up. He's standing here in a high with jacket and with a plastic. And there was a BBC news helicopter just like an hour or two uh, ago in the, in the air, hovering above our site, which means that something happened in the area. It could be the Paralympic Games landing and the Paralympics coming back to uh, the airport. That was the only news I found out why the BBC should be around, but they were actually filming us, so that was interesting. Murdoch's people came came last time, Rupert Murdoch's The Times uh, came to film the site um, a week ago or so, so it looks like it's heating up all this uh, third runway thing is, is coming back on the table and, and the actions might come back this way. And actually there's one on the 1st of October with a, a turnaround on it. It's not that interesting. It's, it's interesting for us because the digger is kind of intimidating and it's digging. But um, yeah, there's an action on the 1st of October, it's a flash mob, you can find out, it's called uh, Stay Grounded, hashtag Stay Grounded. Um, looks interesting enough, it's, it's kind of innocent, but it's a lot of people, like 400 people from around here will be doing something at the airport. So we can expect some more heat also, because obviously they're, they're coming through here as well. Oh, there's some, some activity going on in there, some guy looking at us funny. and. Uh, Return. Wait, I need to zoom in again. Look, there. You see, just as when, um, you know, yesterday was when London had a solidarity demonstration for Standing Rock, the CU reservation, where the Native Americans are um, spearheading the the environmental movement now, and it's looking much more romantic than ever before. Uh, you know, cowboys and Indians on horses fighting for the water. Silver Fox's catchphrase, or whatever he came up with, that we protectors, not protesters. Uh, it needs to be reconnected with this area as well, because all these these three villages will be bulldozed as soon as they start building the third runway. Not to mention the green uh, spaces uh, getting destroyed and more pollution. It's already really polluted, and there's still people living here. Quite a few. Although the aviation industry is buying up all the land and, and, and killing everything slowly but and we have the the microcosm of that with, with this this is basically the back end of the land where um, all the people is based on actually one of the other land it's, it's based on two lands i think and this is the second part owned by some multinational corporation the other one is just a guy who doesn't have too much money but these guys are loaded and, and they've been keeping security here for a lot of money building their little platform to, when the time comes, attack and screw everything up. But this is new that they're, they're coming with diggers. They're not even supposed to do anything. They couldn't do anything with those uh, bits. There's too, too much wildlife and trees and, all, and, and those uh, greenhouses. But they're certainly doing something here. So I think it's their infrastructure for, for um, fortifying the security and, and preparing to get their land back when the time comes. 
So they're getting ready slowly. We should be kind of be more security minded. <laughs> it's it's better to prepare before you get surprised. Alright, that's pretty much it. Ah uh, hey UK watching. I actually wanted to see who who's gonna be here from the regulars. <laughs> Because we need to sort out, like the Occupy News at first was basically the, the security button that I had to press and and, and uh, that, that was really built out, the whole network, that the way we can alert people and the more interesting it was looking, the more people started sharing it and then the more people started watching the, the stream and it looked very good. I, I thought it's going to be the same as this one, I really hope so. But we might have to think about... Uh, having this one and saving the connections from this one and, and spearheading it into a new platform. But that's not branded Occupy London because this, this could be connected to all stuff that we can use Occupy London for, but we, we might need like a new platform to, to refresh the, the whole thing. But we, we're gonna need you guys as well, you're part of the team. number of viewers but nothing interesting yeah. like violence wise or there's no sex drugs I can do on the picture or blue lights so three no, people are all right we've got the good regulars on it it's not forever <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's a big air Definitely not a good sign, <clears throat> in my opinion. Are you live streaming? Yes, yes. I'm live on Occupy London. Uh, we must have seen. <coughs> so, what what do you think this is about? This this digger at the back of the uh, Grow Heathrow Eco Village. I think this is uh, making sure that they can access the land from from the back and the sides so we, we don't have any more cover, uh, natural cover, like these brambles and bushes. And they're basically just doing a bit of daily eco side. If they've got the money to waste and they don't really see it. Going on. Yeah, but it's strange because legally speaking there's nothing really happening until next year. Yeah, it looks like they're busy spending money on security and diggers and Do you think there's a threat of some kind as a result of this? Well the threat is always there, but this just makes it much easier to, to get to us when the time comes. So instead of some 
theatrical frontal attack, we can expect uh, them to gather their troops uh, on the backland. They have their own gate and their own compound. And if this is what it is, it looks like it is. This is flattening all the land and making it very easy to access even with with um, machines like this. It means that uh, we need to start training as well. Uh, we need to organize. Because I think they're, they're a bit of ahead of us at this point. He's going back and forth. Sometimes he's using the digging part to, to get rid of the bushes. He's just using the, the caterpillar thingy <coughs> to, uh, to flatten the land. Even on foot it was hard enough to get there. We've seen a few people with machetes trying to cut their way through it. It was really slow. And this this makes it much much easier to to access. Ah, there we go. So uh, the, the digger is coming closer to us, yeah. yeah. Say, say what you have for breakfast so I can check the sound. I'm not pretty sure. I'm <laughs> not <laughs> sure. Something out of a pin. Out of a pin. Okay, so, um, so what's your motivation to be part of this project? The, the one that we just had? Yeah, yeah. Well, I come from a very polluted uh, city called Budapest, Hungary. And now I live in another very polluted city called London. And uh, London is interesting, it's like a huge village. There's lots of green areas and, and a very strong green belt, which is kind of under threat at this point. I lived in Barnet a lot and I worked in Barnet. The air is much better there than, for example, in Westminster, which is the worst I've, I've uh, uh, encountered in London. And now we're here next to the Heathrow Airport and next to two major motorways. And here as well, the air is really horrible. You can smell it every now and then. We're surrounded with greenery that's grown here for the past few years. Oh, crap. Sorry. Oh. Sorry again. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, 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 so sorry. Rehearsal. Yeah, rehearsal. Okay. <laughs> rehearsal. Okay. <laughs> Once you're done. Okay. Three, two, one. When you're ready, go. Yeah, so I come from Budapest, which is a very polluted uh, city. It's the capital of Hungary. And uh, now I live in London, which is another really heavily polluted um, city in Europe and uh, it's a bit different because the eastern part of uh, Europe is still kind of old school polluted and in here you can see a lot of hybrid vehicles um, and attempts to, to make the air cleaner but somehow the inner part of London Westminster is, is, is just horrible you die if, if you actually live there I don't think too many people live there they just go there to work but um, it's, it's deadly it's, it's really really polluted uh, I lived in Barnet, which is um, northern, I think a bit over the M25, and that's that's clean. That's, that's relatively clean. Although most of the green bat is under threat these days because of the new uh, redevelopments. And uh, now I'm here in Heathrow. I've been involved in the Grow Heathrow uh, protest site. That is about you know, stopping the third runway and and kind of an environmental outpost and the air quality here is also horrible you can smell it every every odd day when when it gets pushed down that two motorways and and the largest airport in in uh, europe is is really uh, having a, a huge impact on the air quality we have surrounded ourselves with uh, greenery this has grown here in the past few years and uh, even without measurements you can figure that that these plants are giving us a lot of uh, oxygen and they're filtering the air. But uh, it depends on the wind. Sometimes you can just, just get the full impact of the smoke from all around us. So I just want to get a bit more um, savvy with uh, how to measure these, these things scientifically, not just with my nose and, and, 
and watching it on my own health. And what do you think should happen to improve air quality, do you think? Well, so, in your opinion, what, what, what should be done? Like, what are the main actions? I'm a bit radical on that one. Uh, one is to, to ban fossil fuels as soon as possible and to re redesign our, our infrastructure everywhere. I mean, shut down all the big industries. I would focus on smaller communities. The smaller, the better. Uh, connect it into a network. Everyone could have their own. Um, their own 3D printing facilities out of uh, sustainable materials, learn again how to uh, do it the old ways, you know, weaving and, and, and going back to the, um, the old practices of that doesn't need any factories. And if you really want to produce something that is like made in a factory, you can have 3D printers. As I said, it's, there's, it's the 21st century, you don't have to suffer the whatever we had to suffer since the Industrial Revolution because the price is, is pretty much the extinction of our, our own species and, and most of the ones that we depend on and, and live on this planet. Okay, final question, um, how positive do you think we are to reach in that sort of like creating a better future, do you think? Are you very positive or...? Well, I can't be positive or negative about it. I'm, I'm doing my best, for example, personally to to work for a better future, a sustainable future. But we are racing our own extinction, so it's... I don't know. We, we'll see in 10 years if, if we want to be alive on this planet or not. I think it's, it's, it's the most interesting. I don't like racing or competition, but this is the only one that I can actually live with now. That, that's the most... Uh, the strongest motivating force, basically, for, for me as well. It's one part of my life I was a tech support person in a game company, so I would be probably playing video games somewhere, if, if not for facing uh, extinction of life on this planet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank, thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Did you get the banners? <laughs> <laughs> You are a naughty, <laughs> naughty, naughty doggy. <laughs>
don't know if you don't want to watch the police on me. <laughs> I'm here kind of on standby. I think we're going to need more uh, live streamers and legal observers. I'm not sure who's filming the action. It's going to start at 12. I'm going to have to stay here and, and keep this site safe. Also probably myself because they know my details at the airport and you probably know the rest if you know me. <laughs> what happens to me if I get arrested at this point? And this site needs to be kept safe because it's surrounded by police. You can't see the rest of them, but they're just buzzing around. People leaving, people getting prepared. Um, yes, I think the flash mob is going from somewhere else, but some of the bikers are coming out of here. We're gonna have a nice big party afterwards. Hopefully not too many arrests are going to happen. But uh, the airport security and the police are really, really jumpy and they're on a heightened level of uh, some kind of stupid terrorist alert thingy. Last time five of us tried to plant some um, pollution meters, basically test tubes, and we got surrounded by like six police tubes and then put an armored vehicle on my friends. Uh, I was filming another friend who was getting nicely assaulted by, by two cops just for trying to <laughs> put up some pollution meters. So that kind of showed how uh, you know, we need to be prepared or alert for any strange police activity. Sorry, I can't give you any more entertainment of giving out uh, taking pictures or giving updates on the Reclaim the Power website or the Reclaim the Power Facebook page. And just let's start a new page in climate activism starting now with this action. It's going to open the door for much more because uh, you probably heard that we've crossed the uh, the carbon threshold and the carbon tipping point and uh, I think we've way past the, the 1.5 degrees and we're darting through the, the 2 degrees Celsius uh, limit as well. So it's not looking too good, people need to do something. The world leaders have failed in Paris and there's a talk of um, people's climate conference, a grassroots people's climate conference to, to, to fix what the world leaders managed to mess up and condemned all of us to death for the human race and and most life on earth at this point so we're expecting all the indigenous people anyone who's being infected by climate change black lives matter uh, of course greenpeace as always and all the organizations and grassroots uh, people who are fighting climate change to come uh, to london near heathrow uh, we can't really announce the location yet but you know where to find us anyway. Keep the word going. You can see it on the Occupied Sun um, headlines today. And the, there are some very interesting uh, initiatives going on. And today will be, as you see, there's gonna be a possible shitstorm. Because Heathrow Airport will be grounded today. It's gonna be shut down from 12 o'clock. So enjoy the fun and I'll be here and if anything happens I'll go live and there's going to be much much more fun happening pretty soon in a couple of weeks. So that's it for me. Daniel signing out uh, from Row Heathrow and let the games begin. <laughs> System change not climate change. Ciao ciao people. Goodbye everywhere. Gonna go live on the internet. Very oh, live on the internet. Yeah. Am I live on the internet now? No, this okay. is just a yeah. camera, this is a video camera, but Danny's doing live with live live from Are you both well today? Huh? Everyone is well. This is Andrea, uh, spokesperson for the uh, climate camp which is starting up in uh, uh, Sips and Village very soon. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Heading off for the action at Heathrow Airport. No, we're just putting these balloons away. Well, something like that. Uh, balloons going out. I'm resting it. I'm going to be over there, please. 
And you're back, you didn't get arrested, well done, yeah, well done. Uh, I think, I think that police um, thingy, oh, oh, these guys are moving. Yeah, uh, sorry, there you go. It's the, um, the silver key by the... You're okay about being filmed? Of course, I'm filming everyone, so that'd be a bit okay. hypocritical if I wasn't. <laughs> no, well, I, I, I assumed that was the case. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, you're getting them by the banner. These guys look good. <laughs> yeah, no, they're okay, they'll be fine. Yeah. He's, uh, I don't know who he's working for, is he with the press or something? <laughs> School so. for Eco Warriors. <laughs> this is going to be an amazing movie. And who are you? Pardon? Who are you? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just <laughs> Um, stop global warming. <laughs> and uh, who do you work for? Are you with the Times? Um, with I'm with Grow Heathrow proudly. Oh, and right. uh, a few other activist organisations. You want to name that? Nice I can't even, I've, I've blanked on it, but it's the, uh, it's not Dash for Gash, it's the other one, I think. Yes, Reclaim the Power? Yeah, I think okay. so. What about it's, the Camp for Climate Action? Have you ever heard of that? Uh, not really. Did you know there's another climate camp opening up uh, shortly? Some, someone mentioned that to me, actually. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, that's something you can film. Looks no, like the passengers no are leaving. Oh. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> we'll get back to you. Yeah. God, this is going to be an amazing movie. Yes. <laughs> are you leaving now? Yes. Don't get caught. Listen, there's a police van right behind you just hiding behind that tree. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Just over there. Yes. Don't get caught, okay? I'll try not. Yeah, good luck. Don't look so worried. It's going to be just fine. <laughs> Have a great day. Well yeah. there. Bye bye. Yeah, we do some of this because it's, it looks like a climate change. <laughs> oh, no, it does indeed. And here we have a photographer taking a picture of and, and he's about to catch the... Oh, sorry, I thought you were someone else. There's my doggy in the window, look. Is he, does he bite? No, 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 no. Sorry. They're after the names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're after the details of everybody. Like so, it's a slight. It's not that interesting, but here we have a man in the mouth. He was coming here. I think he was picking up another barrel, so he was in the region. But Welcome to the new chapter in climate activism. <laughs> you okay with being filmed? Not much, yeah, yeah. not much choice left anyway. We don't want to go extinct. Yeah, we need to it up a bit. Oh, so Luke's on board. Uh huh. So filming. I'm just letting you know who who we've got. Is this preparation? Yeah, Thank you. 
There is something more in there. You cannot recognise me if I just smile uh, too much. So what was the question? Um, it's a private matter actually. Is it? I can't really, I can't talk about the sensitive information. Can all the scientists make sure you've got that side? Can you hear that? Such a bad thing. You're gonna be famous. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know, I know. The police are out there, don't worry, doggy. It's going to be all right. Um, this gentleman is from ITV. He's coming to cover the protest today. And uh, those are our friends that. No, no, that's no, all right, it's all right. No, no, it's all right. I'm letting them just go in. Um, You can do it in front of the banners if you want. Right, You're you. welcome to do that, yeah. Danny, that gentleman's from ITV. I've introduced him to Andrea, and at some point uh, he's going to interview Andrea about the climate camp. Okay, at the great. moment he's interviewing a uh, Sheila about the uh, bike ride. Hey, hey, mommy. And um, that's, uh, perfect, that's right? about it. So it is a fly trap, this place. <laughs> yeah. I to lure them You're going to be famous. I don't want to be famous. No, no, that's good, that's good. Excellent. Yeah, that's the best way because yeah, yeah. it's very scary if someone does want to be famous and they get one. Stay reasonably rooted to the spot for me, that'd be great. Okay, so, um, I'll tell you what's the, what's the point of today? Okay. So, um, oh yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. So, I, um, I should say retain the power as well, which is who we are. Well, 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 okay, we'll tell you what, what group you're from and then we'll... we'll uh, my name's Sheila, I'm from a grassroots direct action network called Retain the Power. Okay. Um, we campaign on variety of issues, um, tackling social, climate, environmental, economic injustices. Right. Comprehensive. So, uh, what's today all about? Today is about sending a strong message to our government, to transport ministers all over the world, to say that we need to stay grounded in climate science and stop airport expansion. And so, what are you doing? We've got two elements of the um, protest today. We've got um, a bunch of people who are cycling en masse, a critical mass bike ride, who will be cycling along a route 
um, which will pass by the airport. Um, it will also stop by a detention centre in Harmonsworth where people who often have been displaced through forced migration due to climate change are ending up in our detention centres and then ironically flown to countries where they could possibly face death or persecution by the aviation industry. So this is the aviation industry is completely complicit in that. We're also going um, close by to Heathrow Airport. Um, this is about the fact that the government is due to make an announcement as to which airport is going to receive a new runway, uh, where they want to build a new runway. Um, it's likely that it's going to be Heathrow and we want to say that if we want to take climate change seriously, we cannot be building any new runways. So where we are now is essentially going to be a new runway potentially. Where we are now is a place called Grow Heathrow and it occupies a piece of land in Sipson village where uh, potentially a third runway would be built. So this entire village and all of its residents would be completely uprooted and all the remaining residents would have to deal with the incredible um, noise and air pollution in the local area. So Aside from that, we also have the fact that a new runway would would cause increased amounts of um, global warming through, through the carbon emissions. I mean, a new runway at Heathrow Airport would actually produce the same amount of carbon emissions as the whole of Kenya. What we're talking about is something that is going to be devastating the lives of millions around the world. And all of this is for the benefit of actually what is a minority of people who are the affluent frequent flyers who take most of the flights from the UK. Um, this is for leisurely flights, short distance flights that could easily be taken by train. So this is about serving the needs of a wealthy minority at the expense of everybody in the world. Do you think that events like today will make much of a difference? I mean, I, I can, your, your, your argument is strong and well made. And I was going to tell you about the other, the other part of the action. The okay, well, okay, well, so the... the, the, the mm -hmm. Okay. So the other part of the, the the other part of the demonstration today is a flash mob. So hundreds of people are expected to turn up at Heathrow Airport today to perform um, a die-in, uh, where hundreds of people will die will will lie down on the floor, representing the hundreds of thousands of people who are dying today each year from climate change and if we don't do something soon that number is going to increase to millions because aviation is the fastest growing source of carbon emissions and it is ironically exempt from all climate change targets all agreements the paris agreement excludes aviation our own climate change act excludes aviation and is allowing aviation to expand oh, yeah. and, and everybody else is going to have to pick up the price for that so but realistically what difference do you think an event like today will make what we want to do with today's action is send a strong message to the aviation industry that people are not going to be standing for this. We do not want a new runway, not at Heathrow, not at Gatwick and not anywhere. This is about sending a strong message to the aviation industry and to the UK government. Right now in Montreal in Canada, um, ministers from all over the world are meeting with aviation bosses at, at an international summit to discuss the future of global aviation. And what they're trying to do is push a bogus solution of carbon offsetting in order to legitimise continued expansion and growth in the aviation industry under the premise, uh, the illusory premise, that this makes it sustainable. This is not sustainable and what we need to be doing is cutting emissions, actual emissions today. The problem is, I, don't think, I think no one would disagree with that, but of course it's, it's about getting the critical mass to get people to change minds at the moment you're already on the fringes how can you convert this into a uh, you know a, a mainstay political force today's action is inviting hundreds of people to take part these are uh, a lot of these people will have never taken part in anything like this before this is about bringing lots more people on board um, uh, uh, explaining the issue, raising awareness around the issue of aviation expansion. A lot of people mistakenly believe uh, the rhetoric that we need to expand our airports because otherwise our economy will fall behind and we will fall behind the rest of Europe and the rest of the world. This is a myth that has been spread by the, avi the aviation. This is a myth that's been spread by the aviation industry to um, to legitimise and to give reason for us to need to expand our airports. Uh, and actually it's unnecessary, it's unjust and we need to, we need to stop it. 
So by inviting lots of people to be part of this protest today, um, we're, um, we're raising awareness around the issue, um, we're expanding the, the movement um, and building, uh, you know, it's a continued attempt to build a critical mass of people to say no, we need to stop airport expansion now. Hello. So I guess from, from today, where do we go? Because this, this, uh, so, we yeah, haven't yeah, left yet, yeah, you'll be pleased to know. Are you on your way? Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, good. Well done. Um. Uh, cool. So, I mean, so you say, so should the worst happen this, you know, this month, the uh, third bombing gets to go ahead. Uh, what do you do from there? What's the sort of the future 12 months, future 24 months? What are you, what are you planning? What's going to be happening to try and you know, turn things in your way? We want as many people to, to become aware of the issues around aviation expansion and how actually this is about serving the needs of a minority few at the expense of everybody. Often this is in parts of the world where they've leased if you're country. Happy and, you know, and you really want to show if you're happy and you know, clap your hands. Oh, come on, you lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just pick up again. So, so yeah. So, where do we go from here? I mean, it should, should you know, your team lose this month? How do you turn that into a win down the road? Um, what we're doing here is building a critical mass. Uh, this is just the beginning of an ongoing escalation of action. We need to be seeing an increase in action. We need to, pe we need to see people taking, taking more action against the aviation industry because this cannot be allowed to, to perpetuate. This is about meeting the needs of a wealthy minority of people at the expense of hundreds of thousands, soon to be millions of people, who, who, are, who are in parts of the world that have least contributed to climate change. These are the poorer parts of the world are, are, are being hit first and hardest by the impacts of climate change. Um, we, we need to be seeing this as a global issue. This is, today's action is also part of a whole global wave of actions around the aviation industry. This is not just about the UK. This is actually about an international movement. And we've hooked up with international movements from so many other countries, um, Turkey, Italy, France, Germany, Indonesia, and they're all taking action against the aviation industry. Um, we need to be uh, building a, a stronger international movement that, that is able to take increased action. The more the industry perpetuates and tries to push aviation growth, the more we are going to rise up against that and say, no, we cannot have airport expansion. Oh, Which okay. leads up yes, to that. Pull that down. Yeah, that's right. Where can we see international cooperation with yeah. grassroots organizations yeah. and people who are being killed by climate change? Um, no, but we're seeing to lead it to the start by the street. Right, right, right. Okay, well, I'll be up there in a moment. Humankind has unleashed on this planet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, great, thank give an overview of the right people that have just turned up. So, um, like, importantly, there's like really no need to speak to the police. Like, we do have police liaison officers to do that for us. Um, also, like, in terms of like cycling, please stick together, um, get a body if you can, and stick your body, keep an eye on them. 
Let's not leave anyone behind to get a flat tyre. That's everyone's responsibility to just keep an eye out for your, your fellow comrades. Um, going through red lights, let's do that all together and not leave anyone behind. Um, and we have got blockers to block roads, so that should make that a lot easier. Um, also, like obviously, uh, like, um, if you haven't done a critical mass before, uh, drivers can get a bit aggy, but just be friendly back. They're not going to do anything, just be friendly. Uh, keep what you to We are going to stop at the detention centre, um, parking around the right, and when we get there, we're going to do a little ride around the detention centre, and we want to like make as much noise as possible so they can really hear us in the detention centre there. Um, Alright, there might be like a few little changes of, of, of the plan of the route on, on route, but just don't worry. Should all be uh, safe and fun and like have a great time. Thanks for coming. Nice to Who are you with? ITV. ITV. Oh yeah, there's someone else here from ITV. Yeah, I well. spotted the, the kit. Right. Yeah, he's just coming. This gentleman here. Revolution. Oh, sorry, dog. Viva la revolution! Sorry, G. I think you're a policeman. Crazy. Hang on, I, I wouldn't, I'm not too sure about all this. Hang on, Danny, 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 Danny I'm not too sure way. about all this. Did anyone see which no, no, no. way they went? Um, if if Hefo gets it, Gatwick will take Hefo to call. If Gatwick gets it, Hefo will take them to call. Stop messing around to do something one way or the other. Yeah, they want to <laughs> expand everything anyway. It's capitalism is growth, endless growth yeah. beyond resources. The whole Brexit resources. thing, yeah, I think they're probably looking at yeah. what's positive. What's more positive than saying, we're going to spend a shitload of money a few on this. Things right. in the air, but... <laughs> yeah, it's good, good, good psychology. A lot of money yeah. nobody's got, but let's spend it anyway. Yeah, yes, sir. I'm Foreigners. sure the good old public services don't mind uh, not having to pay your eyes again. They still would have to do it in some country. 
Mainstream. No, no, no. I was just saying that the, <laughs> the ABC right. of socialism. Yeah, it's okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've read <laughs> a lot. Agreed? I've read a lot of this kind of thing. So it's... Yeah, we'll just have to sleep at night. I like this all written in red. Is that, do you think that's deliberate? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Right. We had neighbours who don't know what's going on. Yeah, can't upset your neighbours. Yeah, it's not even particularly. Not really terrifying. No, it's just well, I expect they're used to it. To be perfectly honest, I want to see what it's going to happen. I'm going to see what it's going to happen. I'm going to see what it's going to happen. I'm going to see what it's going to happen. We all know everyone's having a good time and not going to be going on the airport in a few days. Yeah, basically, that's all we've got planned. It's got a main issue, so it's not going to be a good thing. You're going up and down the streets every day. It's not going to be a good thing. 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 Would you accept that the EU is forcing terrorists? We're trying to get the people not to go or to spoil most because the question is very stupid, don't take part in that because it's just leads to they're trying to get more power. It's already very dictatorial and very bad, and they're being controlled by Putin. But now it's just going to slow it off. It's a summary, summary. Yeah, this this has been fun. Just I'm not big for it, but are you still eligible to vote from here? Um, no, they, they made it impossible. Would you have to uh, Romania, yes. Anyway, I think I mean, if you guys are going to have a party. Uh, for you to, if you want to have a Cool, celebrate, having a good day, maybe? Yeah. It's a Saturday. You have to be ready. Yeah, you have to go home to Florida, I think. And, uh, but not everyone, just, just people living in. <laughs> so, I hope you have a good weekend. There, it's money here. I haven't seen it. Okay. I'm sorry. Just a toss. <laughs> 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 because they, they got to go to the same for letting. Well, in the coming weeks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 So I'm it's sure this isn't a one off, is it? Right, it's good to have these kind of connections because, like, occasionally we get someone who's a bit too violent, and it's good if. It's, it's, a pre it's good if like, the police can deal with that person rather than just shutting down the whole thing. Oh, like, like I said, we're, we're from Heathrow anyway, so it's, it's good to have somebody who's local who knows what the situation is, who knows what the laws are, more importantly, because you get some people from central London who come in and they don't really know all the little intricacies of the airport, do I? So, what all this stuff is. Uh, yeah. Same time next Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> you can't quite do it that fast. But, but you know, the more in this, we need to stop. The, we need to act quickly before climate change gets out of hand. So there'll be more people who want to be involved. We'll do more stuff. So wet weather. I think I looked at the forecast this morning. And thought, Rain all day. And the, in the uh, air traffic control, I've got up to a minute. Stuff, and I said at midday, it's just going to pour with rain all day. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, right. Well, why don't you get wet? I think okay. we're, we're getting our car. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for making it interesting. There was nothing happening. <laughs> On the cycle ride, like. I really wish that I could have come. Um, I, unfortunately, I'm not as physically fit as probably the majority of you, so that was not going to happen. Um, instead, I went and died on the floor in Terminal 2, which is great. There was like so many of us out there, so much power out there, so much energy. It was hilarious. There were photographers everywhere. No one had a clue what was happening. Like, people just died on the floor. And then, like, people started speaking, and then... <laughs> After the yeah, the people start speaking, saying their pieces, and then the fast trackers. Well, we had some really, really smartly dressed people that were just watching us all die on the floor. And then when it came to their time, they tiptoed themselves in amongst us all, all us dirty, scrotty, like dead people that can't afford to go on flights for two miles and pay ridiculous amounts of money for it. So they were walking through us. And they, each, each one of them was saying these really hilarious, just like, you know, people were walking over me saying, get out of the way, you're like, why are you being so inconvenient dying at my feet? That's ridiculous. <laughs> what an inconvenience, how dare you? Like, 
How dare my flight just make you like, sorry. How dare you just fall on the floor because I'm about to get a flight. Two minutes. Basically, <laughs> basically, the high polluted, oh, frequent flyers, high polluters. So we had a check-in desk that was, they had a big banner up that was frequent flyers, high polluters. And a certain person, I don't know who he was, big ups to him wherever he is. I don't know where he is. Um, but yeah, basically he did a bit of a shout out, sort of a, a checking calling for all of the high polluters, frequent flyers. If you'd all like to come and check in now. So that's when they started walking up. Oh, that's when they started tiptoeing over us all dead people. And we're like, ugh, how inconvenient is it you to die at my feet? Like, ugh, so rotten. And they just tiptoed all the way over to go and get their... Uh, Champagne. Where is my glass of champagne, by the way? Um, so they, they, <laughs> so they did that. They did that bit, and then basically after that, um, which I didn't know about, that was going to be happening. Um, so someone, sorry, babe. Someone, someone. Um, I don't know if she's here, but she sort of got up and was like, "So everyone that's dead on the floor." You should have some paper next to you with some song words on it. Let's all start singing. And we all started singing. It was brilliant. Like five old songs. Oh, oh. Can you sing a song? Uh, the go green, go green, go green, go green. You know you just can't take away our lands. Go green, go. Go green, go green. Yes, he can. I feel time is too short. I'm being bullied off the stage. <laughs> well Guys, thank you so much for all your help today. You've all done so many people so proud. Well done. Yeah, that's this one. song. This one. That one seems good. That one, okay. Yeah, that was a brilliant <laughs> one. That was the best one. So, imaginatively called Go Green to the tune of Jolene. <laughs> okay, so this is the chorus. Go green, go green, go green, go green. We're asking you to leave, don't take our land. Go green, go green, go green, go green. Stop because we can. Yay! Now I could easily understand how you could want to mine our land, but you don't know what it means to us. Go green. Its beauty is beyond compare, a common land for all to share, and you don't know what it means to us. Go green. 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 Now sure this area needs the jobs, it needs a million climate jobs Take your trucks away and go in peace, go green While CO2 is on the rise, you're standing there and mark surprise We have to keep it in the ground, go green Go green, go green, go green, go green We're asking you to leave, don't take our land Go green Go green, go green, go green. Don't think that we can stop you, cause we can. This planet is our only home, no planet B. We're all alone, we have to keep it in the ground. Go green. No other minds will break this ground. The dragon's going to take you down. We have to keep it in the ground. Go green. Go green, go green, go green, go green. We're asking you to leave, don't take our land. Go green, go green, go green, go green. Don't think that we can stop because we can.
I wish I was there. Um, now let's hear from what happened on uh, Bike Block. Sheila, would you like to tell us something about it? Big up to Sheila! Big up to all of you for turning up today and taking part in something amazing. Um, so I just want to say one more thing that i just seen uh, online and that is, uh, and, and one thing that I heard about the flash mob. So apparently Heathrow staff members were seen to be told off for watching the flash mob. Yeah! Uh, I, I, I think it went something like, we told you not to watch this and you're still watching it. <laughs> so the airport workers prepared to put their job on the line because it was so oh, gripping. Yeah. So thank you. Big out to everyone. Take over Heathrow Airport! So we fucking did it, man. We fucking did it. So while you lot were all dying, we were all, we set off from here uh, in a massive convoy. It looked amazing. We were all in red. We had sound systems. We had a wood burner making chai. Um, we cycled from here. We cycled from here and we went to the detention centre. Colnbrook Detention Centre, where we made a lot of noise for the people inside to hear us. And um, we had speaker from... from Christine? No, Christine, I don't know who was with the speaker. Someone else. So asked support. Um, talking about the detention centre, talking about people in the detention centre and highlighting the link between climate change and detention centres because people are being forced into mass migration because of climate change causing drought and famine and some of those people are ending up in our detention centres uh, and then being forcibly um, flown back to countries where they face persecution or death. So the aviation industry is totally complicit in this. It is completely linked and we were there to show that link and to highlight that the detention centres need to be stopped down and we need to stop airport expansion. And after making a lot of noise there, we then went off to our secret undisclosed location. And we drove, we took over the whole of the A4, the Bars Road, uh, in a massive convoy. Big ups! Big ups! <laughs> massive big ups, it was amazing. Uh, and we got to very near to the place that we were going to be. The police were there waiting for us. Uh, they'd already blocked it. They yeah? it for us. They don't, yeah, so basically, they had already blocked the entrance for us. <laughs> so they were doing that job for us. Uh, so we decided, since the police were doing such a good job of blocking the road, we would go and block the road somewhere else. <laughs> So we cycled off and we basically did a few rounds of a big roundabout, stopped loads of traffic, there was a lot of carnage, the police weren't sure what we were doing, and then we went from there onto a bridge over the uh, entrance to the runway, uh, to the um, airport, uh, where we were going to be, uh, we dropped some banners there, we took some photos, uh, did more talking and more blocking of roads, and then from there we went on to a village called Longford, which is actually just kind of opposite the detention centre. And the village of Longford is a place that um, people don't really hear about, but that village will be completely desecrated, it will be completely like flattened uh, if the plans for the long way go ahead. Um, and we had the fantastic, I don't know if Christine's still here, but we had Christine from Stop Heat for Expansion who, who, did, who talked to us, she's, she, there she is, who explained to us um, the importance of, of like stopping in that village. I don't know if you wanted to say a few words about it, it'd be good to hear you. <laughs> well, not the people in the flash mob, so maybe uh, that would be quite cool. Um, and and we, we talked there about why it was important to stop in that village, and then we, we decided to do an impromptu die-in, in solidarity with the die-in that's happening inside the airport, and in solidarity with the hundreds of thousands of people who are losing their lives already due to the impacts of climate change, and also in solidarity with the residents of that village who will lose their homes completely. Uh, yeah. And then in. we went back to Colbrook <laughs> <laughs> and then we came back here. <laughs> yeah. 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 Amazing. There are loads more stories I'm sure to hear. It was yeah, was it fun? It was, yeah. it was so much fun. Um, everybody that saw it, we caused a lot of traffic to stop and, oh, and, and take no <laughs> Thank you. So, as you know or might not know, 
This action today is in collaboration with loads of other actions that have been happening against airport expansion all around the world. There's another one in Aust Austria and Vienna at the moment that's also called Stay Grounded that is happening at the moment and we'll hear from them when they're finished um, this evening. Um, we've got people uh, who have been taking action in Mexico, in Turkey, in Montreal, in uh, soon in France uh, at the ZAD, we'll hear about that soon. Um, we'll hear from London, Mexico Solidarity in just a minute. We've got people who haven't been taking action against the anti-aviation expansion uh, campaign, but who are in Berlin having a big meeting for an, uh, stopping the coal industry that is currently going on in Germany, and they've sent a massive uh, message of solidarity and video. Now, unfortunately, we can't show it because we don't have a projector here. Later, we'll see it. Um, and I just want to read out a message that came through yesterday from the people in Turkey. Um, <coughs> so if you just give me one minute. <laughs> so greetings from Istanbul, Turkey, to those of you who are resisting against uh, airport expansion and climate change. We are Northern Forest Defense, an activist initiative who commits itself to the protection of the ecological interconnect interconnected and diverse forestry region extending from Sapanka to Stranza Mountains. This ancient forest that has stood for centuries is currently under the threats of ecocide projects, so-called mega-projects including the third airport in Istanbul, a nuclear power plant, several coal power plants, quarries and mines. We are well aware that we are not the only ones struggling against the alliance between corrupt politicians and greedy companies. Our anger towards this notorious alliance is everywhere. We do know that our world under the epoch of neoliberalism is filled with despair. Yet, all around the world, people are raising their voices to show another world is possible. Hope is everywhere! We learn from our struggle that when anger and hope come together, it flourishes into the beauty of resistance. From Vienna to Istanbul, Dakota to Nantes, London to India, Mexico to Indonesia, resistance is everywhere. We are the Northern Forest Alliance, our sending we, as the Northern Forest Alliance Defence, are sending our solidarity to dreamers of another world, keepers of other stories all around the world. <laughs> and we are warning those who dare to pillage nature. Defenders of life are closing ranks against the never-ending greed of capital everywhere. Throughout the Global Action Week, activists will be rising up against one of the playgrounds of capital. Airport projects and the airport industry in Mexico, Austria, Canada, France and the UK, as well as other countries, and this will be just the beginning. And airport projects are destroying rural areas and forests and making cities inhabitable, um, do not only consume resources necessary for life with their considerable greenhouse gas emissions, but they are also among the biggest perpetrators of climate change. For our future, for the future of all living creatures and nature, today the cry of enough that rises from the northern forests of Istanbul against the third airport and the domination of greedy capital resounds as Yabasta in Mexico. This call is adding to the strength of ZAD, who have been resisting the Notre Dame des Landes airport in France for many years. It reaches to you, defenders of life in the UK, resisting against airport expansions. We stand together with defenders of life everywhere who are organizing to enable a different world against the attacks of capital, and we will continue to fight together. Yeah! Yeah! Um, and now we're going to hear from uh, London, Mexico Solidarity. They've come to um, re report a message that has come over from Mexico uh, in Atenco, um, who are also resisting airport expansion. Is anyone from London, Mexico, so that's here? Where are they coming from? Okay. Hi, we are London, Mexico Solidarity. We are a Zapatista support group that has been active in London for almost, almost uh, 20 years. Wow, so much energy, yay! Um, we have been in solidarity with what's happening here in, in the UK against uh, airport expansion. And we have been trying to make the links with people in Atenco, uh, that is a town in Mexico that has been resisting airport expansion for 15 years. So when we were approached uh, by people from Reclaim the Power to join this protest, we uh, talked to people in Mexico and asked them to send a few words. So they sent a very, well, not very, but kind of long letter. 
that explains what they are doing uh, and they are sending a message in solidarity with you, which is good because we always think that solidarity is not only from the global north, as you say, to the global south, but the two ways. So for us it's very important to be here and it's also very important for people in Atenco to know that people in the UK are fighting, that one of the responses we have was like, oh, it's really good to know that people in the first world are also resisting, you know, because sometimes in Mexico we think that in the first world, as we call it, there are no problems and people are not resisting, so for them to know that there are people resisting here is also very important. So we are conscious that repression can escalate. And we are the last ones who would wish for another Red May, like we had in 2006. The conditions we live in today are complex, after all that has happened in the past 15 years. However, for us it is inconceivable to hand over our Mother Earth. It is inconceivable to give ourselves over to defeat, when we love life and we re refuse to live submissively, enslaved to a false development. We want to live in peace. We want to, our children to have the possibility of and joy of being able to plant and care for trees in rows of corn, beans, etc. And to be able to access water as a right and to have the freedom that we are granted as the owners and guardians of the land. Despite the many months they've spent constructing it, the deadly airport is destined to succumb because the true calling of these lands, which previously were the Great Lake of Texcoco, are meant to be filled with water again. The territory that has already been mistreated, and they want to use it for roads, for property developers, and the devastation of our social fabric. We, like you, know that solidarity is a moral force, that in difficult moments is capable of lifting us up and making the impossible possible. And so we affirm the dignity that you have shown in denouncing the catastrophe that these deadly capitalist projects bring with them in every corner of the globe. The struggle that you have undertaken strengthens our spirits because then we know that we are much more than two peoples resisting and claiming the dignity of life. We are enormously grateful for you to speak of our struggle and we want you to know that we will also talk about what is happening on this side of the world in Mexico. <laughs> Finally, we call on international solidarity from all those countries that President Enrique Peña Nieto might visit and we call on them to condemn for him for the various crimes against humanity that he has committed since he was governor in 2005 and that he continues to commit as president today. Thank you. Um, yeah, it means a lot to have that solidarity and to be able to offer that solidarity um, both ways and I hope that it can encourage us to link up more with struggles that are happening around the world and all the struggles that are interlinked too. It's not just about climate change, it's about all the things that um, are the causes and consequences of it. So now we're also going to hear from what's happening in France, in near Brittany at Notre Dame des Landes and at the ZAD by Kuhn. Hello. Um, well, I'm from the ZAD and I'm the only one here, I think, I'm not sure. But it's a little bit of a difficult moment for, the, for at this moment because there is a possible eviction coming soon in the ZAD. Uh, but first, before talking about the ZAD a little bit, I really, really want to express my happiness that, I'm, that I could be here today and I found this action today really, really nice. I want to have a big cheer for all the people that organized it and, and that took part in it. And not only today, but it, it also so many other things are happening. And also in France, we can see so many other things happening in the UK and all over the world and so much more solidarity between the different anti-aviation struggles. And so maybe a big cheer for that as well. And so, about the ZAD, um, it feels like the right place to talk about it in this inspiring place, Grow Heathrow. This is the first time that I've been here and it looks amazing. Um, 
So, but first I want to see a little bit if people who went to the Z already can put up their hands, because I don't want to speak alone all the time. Okay, I see a couple of them. Perfect. So maybe these people can, if they want to, maybe shout out the word that they, how they felt about the Z being there, that I can repeat in the microphone. <laughs> Naked lake swimming. <laughs> Naked lake swimming. <laughs> it's a nice start. Are there others? Massive. Huh? Massive. Massive. Creative. Creative. Huh? Inspiring. Empowering, inspiring. Cool. Well, so um, there was a lot of people that don't know this ad yet as well, I think. So maybe just a little bit of history. I'm not going to take that long. Um, I'm a little bit tired as well after today. So the ZAD is um, a, a region in France. Well, although there's a couple of people that tell or that say that the ZAD is, is, is an occupied territory, it's not part of the, of the of France. It's a France is a territory between the ZAD and Belgium. So, um, so it's a it's a territory of 4,000 acres. So it's quite big, and there is more or less 250 people living there permanently. Um, and oh, it's going to rain. Nice. Um, uh, and so these. These people, they started, so the, it started in 1969, a little bit of history. Yeah? In 1969, they were the first plans of an airport, or building an airport in Notre Dame de Londres. And in 1969, there was also the first farmers, mostly farmers that were occupied, no, not occupying, but resisting the building of the airport. And it's only about in 2003 that there were the first people occupying buildings there. But, and that is a really important one, and that's also the, the, the importance of international solidarity is that in 2008 there was a climate camp in England and there were a couple of people from the ZAD, from, from, uh, from France that were attending this climate camp and they thought that might be a really good idea. So in 2009 they did the climate camp in the ZAD of Notre Dame de Londres and then it's when it's really it started. So at that moment there, were, there was a call for occupation for all the empty buildings that were already there. And a lot of people stayed. So at that moment, there were 80 people that stayed. Now we're 250. And because of that thing in 2009, that there were so many people that stayed, well, the, the state became a little bit more nervous as well. And uh, they wanted to build the airport again. So in 2012, they tried to evict the zone. And at that moment, there were also 80 people. But they had, they said in a pre press conference before that if they start evicting the zone, then one month later we come back and we retake the zone. So one month later there was a manifestation and there were 40,000 people from all over that came and that just retook the zone. So that was a moment that was really victorious and really, really strong feeling as well. And so from 2012 they left us alone and so the things continued and we built it up until 250 people with a lot more experience and really trying to build this other way of living together, which really works. Well, it almost works. It has, it's, it's in a constant transition, of course. It's always experimenting, it's always moving forward. But we are moving forward. And in, in well, now a little bit of recent history, maybe, is that they want to build an airport still. And in, in this summer, they had a consultation, a referendum, they called it in, in, in France. Um, it wasn't a referendum because the EU, they said that it wasn't legal, the referendum. So they said, OK, we're doing a consultation. It wasn't legal because it wasn't neutral. And this referendum or this consultation, the idea was to really get the people or to really be able to use democracy as a, a thing to evict the zone. There were 50, 55% that voted for the airport. And, and so from then on, they started calling it, well, the people have spoken, so we have to evict the zone. So now there is more and more threats to evict, and the threats are really real. And there is a lot of rumors, and there is a lot of facts for the moment about, uh, about the Z, about the, the evictions. So for example, around the zone, the hotels are booked, uh, the schools are closed, um, there is the hunters, they can't come on the zone anymore. Um, and there is a lot of other things that are happening, but we feel the threat really strongly. So, um, why I'm standing here is for a couple of reasons. It's one is that I 
really love to be here and I really love to see this place and I really wanted to be on this action today as well and to see how it goes here as well and to learn and also to make a call out for people who want to come to the zone and to come and defend that place as well it has become well really in France and I hope also uh, outside of France a real hope for people that something else is possible and a real hope and a real a really strong place and a, and a place that that shows that something else really is possible. And so we wanted new, another 2012. We want another 2012 where we are victorious again and where we can show that the occupation is and the, that the land is really for the people and it's communal and not for building an airport and putting everything down. So uh, there is a big manifestation the 8th the 8th of October, it's really soon I know. There is, and we hope that there will be 40,000 people again. Um, uh, the big manifestation, the idea is that people bring their sticks and bring a, I don't know how it's called here. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a stick for sheep herders or something. Uh, yeah. a, a, a crook, okay. And so that people bring a stick to the zone and they plant it on the zone to, and pledge that they will come back to collect that stick when the eviction starts. And so the 8th, there is, uh, well, there is already quite a lot of people coming from England. So maybe there is a lot more that I can find here. It would be lovely to see a lot of people in the Zad, but I think it's also really important to have a lot of people in occupations here in, in the UK uh, that are happening now as well. Uh, that's also a little bit the slogan of the Zad, Zad partout, uh, Zad everywhere. So I think one Zad is really not enough. We have, we need a lot more. So maybe, I don't know if Dom is up to saying something about that. And thank you very much again for today. So there's just a few more things before this ends. Um, there's going to be photos that are going to be shown on a projector of what's been happening during the day, including um, little uh, affinity group squirrel actions that people might not have been aware of. Um, tonight at the um, back venue over there where there'll be music. So stay for that. Also there's a call out for a computer with an SD card with some uh, video recording stuff. So if someone could lend that and we can start like sending out videos already to people in Vienna to... I'll lend mine. Wait. <laughs> um, we need people to cook still over there because dinner will be served pretty soon. Um, there's also, after this, a tour of Grow Heathrow for anyone who's interested in what's going on here. That will leave right from here. But if anyone's interested, there's um, a photo, a solidarity photo, that'd be nice to take uh, outside of the Grow Heathrow gates with London Mexico Solidarity to send over there. So yeah, photo, tour, cook. Um, and if anyone's got smartphones and is up for retweeting, reposting with the hashtag stay grounded, get it out there as much as possible. And we're going to have a massive round of applause for everyone who's been taking action around the world and everyone who's here now. Applause! <laughs> Roll up, roll up, etc. So, um, dinner will be around 7 pm. Everyone's welcome to eat. It's a vegan dinner, so there's no meat in it. Hooray! And there's no dairy in it. Hooray! No tortured cows. No frustrated chickens. No perforated pigs. No sundered sheep. No um, something fish. Yeah, there we go. No horses' heads. So, we've got dinner. Then, because we're all a disciplined bunch, we'll all trip down to York Space for some open mic. Woo! If you'd like to perform, it'd be ideal if you come and talk, spoke to me. Yeah, I know, it's a bit long shot, isn't it? Um, uh, Mary, how about Mary? Yeah, and then come, if, you want, if you want to perform tonight, come and speak to me, it'll be about 7.30. And Sheila wants to end with one thing, so round of applause for Sheila, and not for me. Yeah, okay, so, so, um, Massive thank you, actually, is what I wanted to say, to the residents of Grow Heathrow for enabling us, for inviting Reclaim the Power to...
to be able to use this space, not just as a base, but for the party this evening, for supporting us in so many ways and being part of this action. This isn't just about Reclaim the Power, this is about all of us working together for a common cause and a common aim. We all want to fight for climate justice and we're all doing this together and we need to be doing more bridging of links and working together if we're going to win this. And so, we so I just want to if anybody wants to get, uh, um, Reclaim the Power has a national gathering which is happening in about three weeks on the 22nd of October in Lancashire. Um, the next thing that we're um, going to be mobilising for is, uh, is around fracking. Um, there are flyers here that you can collect. I think most of you have got some, but yeah, check that out. There's a national gathering in Lancashire. So if you want to come and be part of that, all these campaigns are all connected. They are not separate and we need to make sure we keep seeing that. So just to remind everybody, big up, firstly, big up to all of you who took part in today's action. The show is happening outside, we want to get that now before the light goes, this is perfect light for the photograph. And then there is going to be a tour. Who's leading the tour? Okay, uh, Ma Marie's leading, the she's over there. A tour for Growing Into but if we could all do the photo, the solidarity photo out the front first, that would be amazing, if you want to be part of it. And then, uh, and then the tour is going to happen immediately afterwards. Thank you everyone, and let's have a fucking great party tonight! We have, we have a saying which is, Atenco vive, Atenco. la lucha sigue. Atenco vive, la lucha sigue. Atenco vive, la lucha sigue. Atenco vive, la lucha sigue. Hi, I'd like to show you my art installation, if you'd like to join me. Watch out for the chicken. Here it is. This is called Eternity. It's my latest performance art piece. It challenges people's conceptions of what art is. It raises the question, what is art? Is this art? Is that art? It took me all told from the conception to the execution three years to come up with this. Um, and yeah, here it is. It's ever changing, ever shifting work juxtaposed with the sound of planes, the sunlight, various messages on the walls, and this umbrella.
on, Sam. The chicken, far be it from being the center of, of the piece, is the mise en scène. The chicken is the, the back wall, and in a curious inversion of, of the viewer's perception, conceptual perception, the, ch the, the chairs, the seeming detritus, the dried up soil is the foreground of the piece. So it kind of challenges the viewer. It makes him say, not only does it make him say, but is it art? It makes him say, what is art? And then finally, it makes him say, what is an animate object and what is an inanimate object? Because suddenly the animate can become inanimate and the inanimate can become animate for all eternity. And that's why I named this piece Eternity. Um, and that's it, yeah. Any questions? Where's the chicken? Where's the chicken? Well, I don't know, it's just, it's just gone. The, the chicken's a free roaming agent, that's the thing. It is better with the chicken in there, except for when she shits in there. But, um, come on, Sam. Come on. Yes, come on, Sam. Come on. Come on. There we go, come on. Watch the context change, watch the context change. It's currently in a kind of postmodern state, it's looking at itself, it's evaluating itself. Once the chicken walks in, come on, come on. Come on, come on, chicken. Come on, come on, come on. There you go. She's crossed the threshold, she's, she's now part of the art. You're now part of the art, she's now part of the art. And it, and it again raises the question, who is the artist and who is the audience? Is, is, she, is she the artist, am I the artist? She's, she's the participator observer, so she's broken through that kind of barrier. She's, she, is, she is a representation of the modern day, of the viewer engaging in the text and becoming part of the text. In this case, the text is 20 or 30 chairs boosh, dumped in the middle of a room. And that's eternity. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And when are you going to um, cover my fees? Is that going to be after the interview? Or? Yeah, 50 quid? Cool. Okay. citizens of the world. We regretfully inform you, that the Matrix will not protect you in case of extinction. You can only fool around playing virtual roles until the planet's life support system keeps you alive. At this point you have to notice that the so-called sixth mass extinction has begun, thanks to the Anthropocene, the age of humans. Our civilization is in deep crisis on all levels. But what is worse, our civilization has put humanity's host planet's ecosystems at risk, triggering off a mass extinction event. Without an environment providing all necessary requirements to host human life on Earth, all our political issues become meaningless. Loading. Operation Tardigrade. challenge will grant your species access to the next level of existence, based on mutual aid, and free eco-friendly technology. To boldly go where no man has gone before. The knowledge and all required information can be found around you, inside you, and on the internet. Failing this challenge will result in extinction of the human race. So whenever you're ready, unless you are a tardigrade, get cracking. We are anonymous. We are humans. We are an endangered species, condemned to extinction by its own kind. We are not defending nature. We are nature defending itself. Expect us. <laughs>